<laughs> in the previous <laughs> session too. I was renaming everybody like the last time. <laughs> hey! Oh. Hello, how are you? So good to see you. Oh my God, we've got the babies with us. Of course, of course. Angelo and Tarrington. <laughs> of Wonderful. course. Uh, you asked us to, to get yes. them. So, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> this is very special. <laughs> Would not be complete without them. So we're so happy to have the family together. Yeah, they are, they are the smart ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic. It's so good to see you, Angelo Paddington, and, and a big warm welcome to, to all of you. And uh, Lars, Rags, it's so good to see you. So nice to see you, Ash. <laughs> so it's such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for joining. And, and they look like they're uh, very camera happy. They, they, they're used to this. They're used to being uh, the stars of many shows. So, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're quiet, they're very obedient, and they're sitting like they want to be part of the conversation. Yep. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. They're, uh, they're used to a very strong advocacy on, on issues, uh, you know, to protect our planet. And they've been doing this for years. So they're very yeah. adept. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful to have all of you here. Thank you so much. Thank you We're for thrilled. having us. Thank We're you. Absolutely uh, delighted. Thank you. Good to see you <laughs> both. <laughs> yeah. Likewise. Likewise. It's such a pleasure. And we are delighted to, to, uh, to have you here, to welcome you. To the to the pop festival, and uh, which we've uh, you know kicking off literally together with you, which is very very special to us. Um, mm -hmm. And um, we're we're going to be live as I think we are already, um, and I'm looking forward to to being in conversation with you. And I'm going to ask Drisha, uh, who's going to join us here. Thank you, Drisha, for for being here too, uh, to to provide a little bit of an introduction, and then we'll. Uh, we'll get into a conversation, which I'm so looking forward to. Thank you, uh, Rags, <laughs> Lars, and Angelo and Paddington. <laughs> this is Angelo. Yes. <laughs> Angelo <laughs> is... Yeah. That's actually my dog, and this is Lars, but they've changed. Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he decided to swap. <laughs> they felt a little bit uncomfortable with the camera, so they swapped. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Thank you so much again. Of course. Thank you, Drisha. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rash. Good morning and good evening to everybody. Welcome to session three of day one. Sorry to keep you all in the waiting room for more than 10 minutes. Uh, we were tying up our two sessions, which were running parallelly, the opening session, session one, and the uh, uh, poster presentation, session two. This session is session three, all about the founder's journey to creating the Perfect World Foundation. We have uh, Ms. Mrs. Rangel Jacobson and Mr. Lars Jacobson. And this session is all about a conversation with them, uh, the founders of the Perfect World Foundation, Sweden. Um, before we start the session, I would like to thank all the participants who have joined us and uh, who have transferred them from session one to session two and then uh, session three. Thank you so much. I would also like to thank all the volunteers who are uh, helping us out uh, to, uh, for the smooth uh, session. Um, now I would like to introduce uh, Mrs. Ranhil Jacobson. She is an entrepreneur, Ooh. philanthropist and conservationist. She is CEO and co-founder of the nonprofit Nature and Animal Organization, the Perfect World Foundation, which is of an Scandinavian origin, but with a global mission. With her extensive experience from business and civil society, she is steering the organization with a clear focus on saving a part of our paradise for coming generations. Welcome, Mrs. Jacobson. Thank you, um, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, 
Then we have Mr. Lars Jacobson, who is a world-renowned entrepreneur who has made a leap from oil sector to renewable and solar technology. Today, he leads the Texas Energy Storage as chairman and CEO and is chairman of the Perfect World Foundation and also the director of the World Sustainable Development Forum. Welcome, Mr. Lars. Thank you we very much. So glad to have you. <laughs> Thank you, Trisha. <laughs> we also Thank have you, Dr. Ash Pachori, who would now uh, take over the lead to start the conversation, who is a dear friend of Mr. and Mrs. Jacobson. Over to you, Dr. Ash. Thank you so much, uh, Drisha. And I just want to say a big warm welcome to Rags and Lars and certainly also to Angelo and pa Paddington, who we're <laughs> delighted to have here together with us. It's really something we've been eagerly waiting for and, and, and it just all seems complete. Um, I am so thrilled to be able to, uh, you know, have this important conversation. And I want to see, I can see we have a lot of, uh, you know, members of the Pop family here with us. And I, I wanted to say that this is going to be a really uh, inspiring story. So I'm going to ask uh, Rags and Lars to tell us a little bit about the Perfect World Foundation story to get us started. How uh, and when did you set it up? And what was the what was your motivation for getting it going? Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you. I think Edrich actually did a very good uh, conclusion. I mean, uh, so I, I think everything is said, Brax, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually it started many years ago when me and Lars was traveling around the world and uh, we saw what was going on. Uh, and we, I think we had the opportunity between works, actually. Yeah, yeah. So we, we it was on one trip uh, from... Uh, Mount in Botswana to uh, up to Zimbabwe. We were driving with a friend, and uh, yeah, we met a lot of um, sanctuaries and met a lot of people working with conservation. And we heard these horrible stories from everyone what was going on with the rhinos and elephants. And yeah, yeah, I can add to that during this trip, we actually passed a water hole uh, where we met, uh, I think it was like 100 elephants in a herd and uh, the week after someone was putting down some cyanide into the water hole and they killed all the elephants and all the surrounding animals. And uh, that was a really, really sad experience, I would like to say. Yeah, I, I would say that it was a shock. The whole trip was amazing. I mean, we love Africa and uh, yeah, and we ended up uh, in Zimbabwe um, at a place called Aimiri. And we were sitting there having a gin tonic, <laughs> tired from the long trip, yeah. long driving. And uh, they continued to tell us how they lost all their rhinos uh, 2004 or something. To poachers. And, yeah. yeah, to poachers. They woke up one morning and it was just a bloodbath. And, and there was a small little calf that survived, but he was very traumatized. And... Um, and when we were sitting there, we said, oh my God, we have to do something. We have to go back to Sweden and see if we could be that prolonged arm and see how we in one way could, could, could participate to, to, to a fundraise or whatever. And they told us all this the funny story about the attempts to do fundraising in Africa, you know, with uh, barbecues that was basically raining away. And, you know, it's not many people in Zimbabwe in the area where, where I merely are. So, uh, I mean, they didn't fund a single dollar to, the, to, the, to, the, to try to save the rhinos. No. So Rex and me said after, I think it was two gin tonics actually, <laughs> uh, that uh, we, take that, uh, we take that task and we bring it to Sweden and to Europe and uh, we will create a huge gala for, uh, to, called Save the Rhino. And we did. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, I like, we always said like the sweets, if we say something, we have to, to do it. <laughs> so, so we did. Yeah. And, 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 he, uh, and after that, we continue our traveling. We went to Borneo. So we went into the jungle and we also saw what was going on in the rainforest. And yeah. I, I mean, we were so disappointed actually or, or when we saw this with our own eyes. I, I mean, most people they go and they stay on a safari tent and everything is very fantastic and 
if you start looking around and ask people who are working in the area, uh, there's another side of the story. And uh, that was actually, people said, why don't you start your own organization? And we had already registered the perfectworldfoundation.com uh, because we wanted to make a, a virtual world. That yeah, was your yeah, idea. Exactly, yeah. So we said, why don't you use that name? It's just perfect. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, during these trips, we started to give away our own money, but we realized that we will not be able to save the world with our own money. So we started the foundation and uh, the purpose is to uh, get bring awareness to people, uh, bring more money into conservation, uh, bring important questions up on the surface, create new uh, technologies, save the animals. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's much more fun to work together as well, like with the pop moment. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow, that's uh, quite something. And I, I can just imagine that, uh, you know, getting out to a number of these places and getting to experience things firsthand just creates a certain inspiration and a passion to do things uh, and the outcome is the Perfect World Foundation. And I know you're doing, uh, you're doing so much in, in, in geographies of the world we need it most. Um, yeah. So it, it's, but I think it's that's, cool. a, that's, a, that's a big problem because, well, I mean, it's very expensive to go on a safari. Not many people have that opportunity to go and see uh, these amazing animals uh, in the, in the, where they should be, not, on, uh, not at the zoo. So, so, I mean, it's hard work. Yes, it is indeed. It's yeah. a lot of work and, and a lot of strong activism and advocacy. And, and like you said, partnerships, collaboration are a part of that. And I'm sure that that's an important part of lending strength to all that you do. And I've had the good fortune of being a, a part of so many amazing things you do. Uh, so thank you for sharing that beautiful story. Um, yeah, that was a little part of it. It was a very, it was a very it short. It's a small part of a large story. The yeah. real, the real story is a little bit longer. Actually, yeah. <laughs> take that another time. <laughs> Absolutely, Tricia. Um, thank you so much for sharing that story with us. Um, I would like to ask you. Um, you, you, you both are ambassadors of the elephant family in the UK. Tell us about your role in there. It actually started, the, the whole thing with elephant family started uh, with a big egg hunt in London. Yeah. We, we were actually, we, we... That's what you used to say, if it starts with an egg or with elephant, is that uh, oh, something similar? <laughs> no, we actually rented an apartment in, in London because we were there for work for a couple of months and, and we saw all these beautiful big eggs all around London. So we started uh, walking around uh, and it was like, the, it was a competition. Yeah, it was, all the eggs was designed by different artists. And uh, the competition was to find 208 eggs and uh, locate them and, uh, you know, make record of them and, uh, and learn about uh, elephants during the same time. Yeah, and, and, and we, we have dogs, so we were walking around, so this was perfect for us. Mm -hmm. But then we thought, when we read about it, it said elephant families. So we were like, wow, what is this elephant family? We love elephants. <laughs> So we, it, 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 uh, we ended up buying one of these beautiful eggs at the auction. Rags couldn't live without this egg, actually. So <laughs> we, you know, we ended up this, with the this, egg. The story is pretty funny <laughs> because we got this paper on the, the door every morning. And uh, uh, one morning when the paper, uh, I opened up the paper and Goldie Horn was holding my egg. <laughs> so I said, no loss. She's holding the egg that I want to buy. <laughs> and I, was, I was trying to tell Rags that it was actually not Rags' egg. It was one of 208 eggs around London. And, uh, Goldie Horn had all the right, actually, to uh, hug that bag. So that was a little bit tricky, but we got my egg at the end. But yeah, we, we got her egg. <laughs> so a couple of months after that, we got an invitation for an uh, animal ball. Uh, and we never heard about an animal ball before. So me and Law said, 
of course we have to go to London to this ele- ele- no elephant ball, it was an animal ball, yeah. Animal ball, yeah. Uh, so we went there, uh, like two uh, stupid Swedes, didn't know anything about anything. <laughs> we came there and the invitation said it was at the Clarence house. So we actually called a friend and said, what is Clarence house? And he was just laughing. So it's where the prince live. <laughs> yeah. we, okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, nice. <laughs> so, yeah, we went there and uh, I mean, all the people working for Elephant Family are amazing and it's an amazing organization. And uh, they um, they asked us if we wanted to be ambassadors. So we, uh, we were and uh, uh, we actually learned to know the guy who was behind Elephant Family yeah. and he was actually the brother of Camilla Bowles. And uh, yeah, Lars, you can continue. Yeah, because... yeah, he was running an uh, Asian elephant uh, sanctuary program uh, through uh, in India through uh, Elephant Family, and um, um, and we decided actually because we we la- Mark Chand was his name and we liked him a lot, so we said that we need to award him because we haven't talked about that yet. But the Perfect World Foundation decided to give an award on a yearly basis to someone that are doing something extra for conservation. And uh, we decided in 2014 or something like that to give the award to Mark. Uh, We created a ball in Sweden. We had 500 invited guests. We got the Swedish crown princess to participate. But unfortunately, just weeks before our ball, Mark Shand fell in New York on 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 the street. Uh, uh, during a, a fundraising uh, event, and he died, and uh, that was really, really sad. So the award never came to Mark, uh, but we were invited once again to uh, the Prince of Wales and uh, Camilla Parker Bowles. So they, they actually, uh, and they re- stepped forward and and uh, took yeah. over the organization yeah, basically. Yeah. And, we... and um, yeah, so um, and. Uh, Mark died and uh, he had saved this elephant in India. So they decided to create a tuk tuk race through India to bring his ashes back to his elephant. So uh, so we did. <laughs> so we, we were driving 500 kilometers through where it said India on the map. <laughs> yeah, I to A. <laughs> and, uh, no, I hope they don't ask us where we were because it was in the middle of the yeah, in the middle of India. <laughs> but it was amazing. So we Absolutely brought we beautiful. brought the ashes. We um, we uh, designed our uh, tuk tuk with uh, blue and yellow like the Swedish colors with. Viking helmets and everything needed on a trip through India. And uh, we brought his ashes back to his elephant. So it was a touching moment. Yeah. Fun, fun trip with a touching end. It, I mean, it was amazing to, to when we were, we were like 70 tuk tuks uh, on this trip. And when we went through these small villages in India and all the kids came out and I think we bought everything, all of us in, in the stores, whatever we can find and gave to the kids when we came. Uh, it was beautiful. And we learned us the hard way about the Indian roads uh, <laughs> because we were driving ourselves. So we had two, uh, two ambulances. After three hours, we didn't have any ambulances uh, because we had six people in the hospital. <laughs> So, but we uh, we managed. Yeah. It we was, survived. Uh, it was pretty serious. They came and said, "You have to stop. No more racing. Otherwise, you have to go back home." So, but you should. When we came to the, to the airport on our way back home, I mean, you would have been laughing a lot because everybody looked at, like they had been to the Second War. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Leaping <laughs> and you know, clusters <laughs> everywhere, but but we had fun and well, we raised a lot of money for Asian elephants. Mm. So that was good, yeah. For corridors, building corridors for elephants that's what's the main thing for elephant family. So right. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much from Asia. <laughs> from, from Asia and from the entire world, you have been taking care of a lot of families, a lot of elephant families, and the people who depend on them. And as a couple, also, you are inspiring others to, you know, keep your observation hat on and uh, 
you can make and create a lot of difference. So thank you so and, much. And uh, like you said, there are so many things that are happening in the world and, um, you know, we need to come together uh, to, to really protect uh, all species. Our very own, um, you know, balance in terms of an existence depends upon all species that we need to share this planet with, right? And, and I know you've been doing so much. Uh, I myself have been uh, a, very blessed to be a part of the very exquisite polar bear uh, ball event that, that the Perfect World Foundation conducted in, in September 2018 in, in Gothenburg. And, um, you know, this I know was a culmination of a lot of work that the two of you and all of the Perfect World Foundation had done for the polar bear. Uh, and so there are so many species but uh, you've been ex you're outstanding advocates. And in fact, I wanted to point out in, to, the, to the young, uh, you know, the Bob family that's listening in on this, that um, Rags and Lars have done a lot working with Sir David Attenborough and also um, uh, talking of the Clarence House also uh, and, and, the, and the Royal family also with the, um, uh, it's the, the Duchess of York. And I know that, you know, you've also awarded Dr. Jane Goodall, uh, previously in 2015, uh, and you know you've had several events to to mark, uh, a, you know, outstanding leadership uh, and also advocacy. And I'd love to hear from you. You know, uh, what some of the some of the inspiration for what you do in terms of your advocacy is, and where do you see it going forward, especially in light of the many experiences I know you've personally had. Uh, I mean, to have uh, David Attenborough in Gothenburg for two days, that was, I mean, just amazing. He, he's even better <laughs> than you think. <laughs> no, he's yes. so humble and uh, uh, he's an amazing person. Yeah. Uh, it's no doubt that he's uh, as, I mean, famous as he is because he's great. And it's the same, like you said, with Jane Goodall. We met her in Stockholm and uh, the last, Thing she said to us was like never ever give up and it, I mean it's always good to meet these uh, old uh, passionate uh, I mean they are force for this planet sadly they are so old so we need a lot of young uh, people now fighting in with the same spirit I think yeah we need of course the next generation to take over well, I mean we had you, we had David Attenborough in Gothenburg, as you said, but we had you also, Ash, and <laughs> we had, uh, the, <laughs> and uh, the honor to have your dad there. Mm. And uh, I mean, uh, we had a conference, we were talking about climate, we were talking, you were represented by POP and uh, also WSDF, and, uh, and the outcome from the climate aid conference in, in, uh, in 2018, and was, a polar bear conference, was, yeah. yeah, and climate aid conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we we also had uh, the outcome was that we are now creating something called Climate Aid World Forum. So it will start in 2021. <clears throat> uh, we have got a huge interest uh, from uh, people, politicians, uh, companies, uh, local, international governments uh, to participate. Uh, and uh, this conference will go on from 2021 to 2030. After that, we will close and make sure that we are making everything safe for the next generation between 2030. So that's the ambition. Fantastic. And this is the, the decade of action. So um, like you said, we need, to, we need to mobilize every generation to be a part of this and, and to play their part in amplifying their voice and standing up for, uh, for the species that uh, we need to be able to protect. Uh, and also, of course, the health of the planet overall, but um, it's fantastic. And um, I'm gonna, uh, in fact, um, ask, I know Drisha has a very interesting question because uh, I know, uh, Lars, you have a fascinating journey and we'd love to hear more about it. So over to Dersha, uh, please. Thank you, Dr. Rash. 
I think this is a very important question and uh, I'm sure that all the young people out there are waiting, will be waiting to know uh, what's the journey uh, of yours, uh, that interesting journey from an oil sector to an exemplary re leadership in re renewable energy and sonal technology, because we as young people feel that uh, in this sector, what career options do we have? And for somebody uh, who is a great leader now in renewable energy and solar technology, I think it will be a great motivator. So we would like to know more about your journey, sir. Yeah, of course, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, the, there are different uh, stories around how I, I ended my time in the oil industry. I mean, of course, I, as a young man, I was just trying to to feed myself and ended up in, in the oil industry. And, uh, but when I met my uh, beautiful wife, uh, she said that if you're gonna marry me, you can't keep on working within the oil industry. So that is the short story. Yeah? <laughs> but the, the little bit longer story maybe is that, uh, I mean, uh, th that was a living and uh, we all understand. And uh, when you are working within uh, within uh, the oil industry, you of course understand that this is nothing that we can keep on doing. We cannot keep on bringing up uh, fossil fuels from underground and, and kill our planet. So that's, that's a no brainer to be honest. And I think many of the people within the oil industry would agree. But the problem is that we of course need to find solutions to get rid of oil. And uh, so I started to focus, and, and one of the reasons is, of course, I mean, when we're talking about biodiversity, our planet will not survive, our animals will not survive. We can, as uh, Dr. Richard Leakey said in 2018 or 17 at our gala in, in Gothenburg, he said that it doesn't matter if we stop poaching, if the elephants die from, from, uh, from uh, lack of water or from climate change. So, uh, so, I mean, the, the only way of creating a new sustainable tomorrow is, of course, to bring new technologies to the marketplace. Uh, not only to bring new technologies, we need to industrialize new technologies, we need, to, we need to produce and we need to implement new technologies and get rid of fossil fuels. And um, these solutions, need, of course, to be cheap. That's number one. Humanity is not more sophisticated than that. I mean, even if we bring the most beautiful solutions to the market, the most uh, environmental friendly solutions to the market, it doesn't matter because what, what the market, what the business, what governments want is cheap solutions. So we have been uh, focusing for a number of years to, to, to find not only energy, as you say, it's solar energy producing systems, but we need battery and energy storage solutions to be able to distribute energy during the 24 hours, during the dark hours. As you know, I mean, solar energy is just working when the sun is shining, but you probably want to turn on the lights after the sun is gone. So we need cheap energy storage solutions. and. Uh, we are on the track. We have created a number of uh, agreements. We signed a huge agreement with US Department of Energy two years ago, where we now have defined uh, a technology that could potentially uh, be that solution. And we are now working really, really hard on, on commercializing that technology within the next years to come. Fantastic. Thank you so much, sir. I think for all the ladies who are who have joined this meeting and who are going to watch, the one way to do advocacy is uh, learning the art of how ma'am that did that. And then um, mm -hmm. uh, to sir, thank you so much because I think you are doing an amazing job and motivating all of us. Over to you, Dr. Ash. Absolutely. That's 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 one way of doing it. And I think it's it's beautiful because what a what a powerful transition. And um, you know, um, you know the kind of impact that the the enterprise that you're leading now is um, long long lasting, and really the, the not only the future but the present. And I just want to say that's 
a hugely inspirational story. I was wondering as we talk about the 10 years, um, the action that's needed, what, what, what lies uh, beyond for the Perfect World Foundation and uh, what are plans for climate aid, corona aid and, um, and the next uh, activities that, that you have planned for, for the, for the organization. And it's Let's hope that the corona aid is over soon. <laughs> I hope so. yeah. now, I think we all will uh, agree on that because I mean, many of our, I mean, projects that we are working with are having a tough time now. So, yeah. uh, I mean, I mean, uh, it's so, it's, it's, it's difficult because, I mean, you don't want people to travel too much, but I mean, we, some countries are really dependent on people coming, tourists. So, so um, yeah, it's, not, it's not an easy question. I think we need new uh, solution technical solution for, for flying and yeah. transportation and it's the most important thing, the big problem. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, the coming generations also want to discover, they want to travel, they want to meet friends around the world and uh, and we will keep on consuming, unfortunately. I don't think we will go naked during the next decade. So, uh, so I think we need to bring new technologies, sustainable technologies, circular technologies to the market and we need to do it fast. And according to Corona, I just want to add that the, the environment is not waiting for Corona to disappear. We need to act now, even through this kind of events, through webinars and, and all other kind of technical solutions, because the environment, the climate change is ongoing and we lost a very, very important year. Now we have even more hurry. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I, uh, I, do, I do agree with you. I mean, we've, I hope that this has been something that has shaken us to, to realize the importance in terms of both the urgency in terms of action, but also the fact that we need to all play our part. It's not going to happen otherwise. And, and we have a small window of opportunity, but uh, you know, we've definitely entered what's a pandemic era, and if we don't do, don't do this fast, it, it's going to be too late. So, um, you know, I, I really appreciate your message. And I also want to say that you've done um, a lot to spread the message of love. Um, you know, I know that this has been a year full of unprecedented challenge, uh, but at the same time, the Perfect World Foundation with its very big heart right there um, mm -hmm. is, um, is one that has really done its part to uh, spread this message. And I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how and what it was that you did, and then we'd love to be able to share your video as well. So, uh, so I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that. Uh, there was just an idea that I had to do this video. It was really challenging. <laughs> we are supposed to do one with, uh, you have one there. <laughs> <laughs> you know how much work it is to try to get <laughs> celebrities and the project to sing and the same song. And my God, I was going nuts. <laughs> 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 we still have a little bit to work on that video, yeah, but yeah. we will. But uh, yeah. But it's, I mean, a, it's a it's a song with a lot of love. Yeah, <laughs> we can all agree on that. <laughs> yeah, but I think I mean it's so much sad things going around. People lose their jobs, and animals are killed by American hunters. Uh, you know, sometimes you just have to do something that spread love, and uh, that's what we were trying to do with that video. <laughs> and I mean, the passion we have for 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 the planet and. Uh, I mean, the most vulnerable are animals. I'm from the Arctic. I mean, that's why I love polar bears. If you go up, if you have the opportunity to go up to the Arctic, to Svalbard, for an example, I mean, and you, where you actually can see what's going on. I mean, it's so scary. We have been there and you see the ice loss. And uh, I mean, for, from decades, decades, I mean, it's huge. 
the difference from when you look at picture is so so scary mm. so so um yeah we just have to keep on i mean sometimes you you do funny movies and movies with a or videos with a lot of love in it and sometimes you have to do some scary work but I mean, yeah. we can just mix and together I think we can make uh, this world a little bit uh, more perfect. <laughs> yeah. And if you can't Absolutely. save the polar bears, I mean, the first thing I did some years ago was that I found drags in the Arctic <laughs> and I actually saved her from the darkness <laughs> from down the polar to, <laughs> from the polar bears. So, I mean... Uh, I mean, my ancestors were shooting all the polar bears up in the Arctic and, and they were sent to different uh, zoos around the world. My father, he, he was feeding all the polar bear babies up in north of Norway when they came with the boats. I mean, that is not happening. <laughs> so yeah. that's... Something. That's a good thing. <laughs> That's it's a, a good, good thing. Yeah, I it's mean, a good start. Yeah. <laughs> but once again, I mean, um, the climate change is taking care That's of a hard. lot, unfortunately. Yeah. So we need to find new ways of uh, stopping this. Uh, yeah. This I think uh, transition. Yeah. For, for, for our wildlife. Yeah, and yeah. and as you know, I mean, as Rex uh, describes, everything is happening so fast in the polar regions and. Uh, and uh, yeah. the first animal or iconic animal to be affected is, of course, the polar bear. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you mean, you know, your father was a good friend with Prince Albert of Monaco, and he would be awarded next year. And uh, Prince Albert Foundation also doing a lot for, for uh, the polar regions. So, yeah. 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 Together we can be strong. Absolutely. I was just going to say together, together we can make the difference. And, and it's so stark when you when you're physically there and you're seeing uh, the difference in uh, the state of, uh, you know, the polar bear and, and other animals, too. And when you physically get to see them is when it's really in your face. Of course, we have information. And in fact, related to that, I can see a question over here uh, from one of our uh, pop family members from the from Algeria, and he he's asking um, that you know we've got we've got a minority um, of people in the world who are aware, uh, conscious, and are activists or scientists, uh, but um, there's a large majority that's not. So I think his his question is really about how how do we how do we make that diff how do we make a difference with the larger part of uh, the, the global community in terms of getting them to start taking action and also become a bear? That's a very good question. And uh, we, we always said we, we, we have to, to uh, take the nature into the city because the major big cities, there is where you find the politicians, all the people who decide... Uh, what do you say? What's the name, Lars, in English? I don't know. I know it in Swedish. <laughs> I'm glad we have Greta, because Greta speaks a little bit uh, Swedish sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I think it's so important, because most of the old people live in big cities, and they are cut out from the nature. And, and uh, so it's a very good question. How do we get all these people to, to, to care? But I, but I think... Um... Sometimes you can feel a little bit small when you see all these problems, when you see the icebergs melting and uh, sea levels rising and, you know, you feel that you are very, I mean, you feel that you can't really do anything because you are just one of but then you almost can think, 10 think billion about, people. Uh, Greta. <laughs> yeah, you can think about Greta and uh, of course she thing. has done a huge difference during yeah. the last one and a half yeah. year and... Uh, and just like Rag said before, when we met Jane Goodall and she said, we can never, never give up. And that's why it's so important, the moment you are doing with the pop movement and all the people around the world to keep together and keep on helping each other to keep the energy level up. Because sometimes, of course, it's, it's, uh, it, you get sad, you get uh, frustrated, you, get, you feel small because all these things is happening. But... We are actually a number of people, including you all, participating here today. I mean, uh, and we together we can make a difference and we can give each other energy to make change. Yeah. That's like your father powerful. did. Uh, I mean, 
he he was fighting for the planet yeah. until the end. He gave us energy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, open so many doors for us. Yeah. So so that's what we are. We we should sharing is caring. Yes. yes. Yeah. And that's where I think the power of love and commitment and and making that difference uh, together is is extremely extremely uh, impactful. And I think we need to spread that sentiment. Uh, you know, that's what makes the difference. And yeah. uh, you know, I just want to say that I know that one of the things we, we have experienced in this period of pandemic has been the fact that, uh, you know, people have been in this lockdown and have not been able to get out. And um, the Give a Little Love initiative uh, was really about also raising awareness uh, and supporting animals um, that have not been able to get the support that normally would have happened if it was a regular year. And so um, every drop fills the ocean. Yeah, yeah, it's true. That's wonderful. There, there's one more question before we, we play the beautiful uh, music, which is our, <laughs> which is our anthem now. Um, I, we have a question here, uh, which is that in the um, aftermath of this pandemic, um, how, how would, um, in your perspective, we be able to reach the, the rural communities and other minorities that are otherwise cut off and isolated um, by, by, from, you know, from, from mainstream society. Um, I wondered with the, with the strong advocacy that you do and, and all that, you know, your voice gets out to so many places far and wide. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on this. Yeah, maybe, maybe we can go back to uh, when we were in the middle of uh, Zimbabwe, someone uh, somewhere where we were absolutely in the middle of nowhere uh, when it comes to population, and uh, and uh, you you meet these people, and I mean it is diff difficult to do a fundraising event in the middle of the jungle or whatever you are. So I mean we need to help each other. We need to communicate in different ways. We need to have webinars, we need to meet, we need to, yeah. unfortunately, we also need to travel to meet each other. Yeah, so we but, need new technologies yeah. once again to be able to but, do But that. I also think if people reach out to us, we could be a prolonged arm. Exactly. In our country, yeah. only in other countries. I yeah. mean, but sometimes we don't know what's going on. I mean, in yeah. whatever it, it could be in the world, but I mean, we love to share stories when we came back from Zimbabwe to Gothenburg in the middle of the, almost, not in the Arctic, but almost in the Arctic, in the darkness, and said that we are supposed to save rhinos in Africa, people were looking at us and said, are you crazy? I mean, so, uh, <laughs> so I mean, and we felt that we need to help the, the rhinos in Africa, and we did, and, uh, you know, we, knew, we all need to help each other. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that's fantastic. And I'm going to tell everybody over here, please do, um, you know, reach out to, to Rags and Lars and the Perfect World Foundation because they're, they're really touching uh, corners of the globe where I think a lot of us otherwise don't get to go and don't get to make a difference. And I think that the incredible thing about the work that you do is you work uh, at very sort of high level policy, advocacy, science, and then at the same time you work in on the ground in the in the you know jungles and forests and with the wildlife and, and communities in, in several places around the world. And I think you sort of bring the two worlds together, which is fantastic. And we need so much more of that. So I'm gonna tell everyone here who's who's part of this conversation and listening to please reach out uh, to the Perfect World Foundation and reach out to Lars and and Rags and and Angelo and Paddington and and really make that <laughs> make that difference together because like uh, like we've heard Rags and Lars tell us over and over it's about coming together it's about collaborating and it's about uh, unifying those efforts and together we can so um, with that I'm going to ask uh, Drisha if we can get the the beautiful music video um, and this is really a very powerful one I agree with rags that I hope the Corona aid is, is really over, but it's, a, it's got a strong message. And I think the message is, is, uh, is everlasting because we do need to 
to do to to fill uh, our you know the world with love and and embrace all forms of nature and uh, wildlife. So with that, let's get the beautiful video going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for having us. <laughs> and thank you so much, Rags and Lars and and Paddington and Angelo. It's such a an honor. Thank you. <laughs>